All right, so we got all of our injectors laid out here. Um, as you can see, I've already cleaned this one. I haven't touched the rest of them yet. So basically all we're doing, we're taking off an O-ring here. We're taking off an O-ring here. We're gonna take this one off up here, which is already removed. Um, and then there's a copper seal down here that you get a razor blade in action. You can actually get behind that razor or the copper washer and then push it up off of the injector. Um, after you've done all that, then I just like to take a nice clean rag, wipe them down, get all the oil residue off of them. And then the only other thing I like to do to clean these up, just take a little bit of this scotch Bright pad here and actually just... Um, work its way around this nozzle as well as the very tip of it that'll clean off all of the soot as you can see like this one see how much darker this one is you take this scotch bright pad and you can actually clean it up pretty nice uh, clean off the tip here just make sure that this thing is super super clean um, you don't want any residual uh, scotch bright pad or rag material or anything on this injector you just want it to be super super clean so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna get all of these cleaned up and then uh, we'll get our new seals on. All right, so as you can see, we got them all cleaned up. They look brand spanking new, I swear. Um, this is the part number for the Ford Injector Reseal Kits. It comes with the three and then that copper uh, seal. Where is my little 10 mil? There it is. <clears throat> so this is what I use to install the copper seal. Um, as far as the rest of them, I'll kind of go through how I do it um, whenever I'm resealing these. But um, just have a little bit of oil on hand, you know, and it's really, it's not too hard. So uh let's go ahead and get started on this we'll we'll go ahead and i'll show you how to do one of them and then uh i'll just do a time lapse for the rest all right so as you can see here we have a blue one a white one a black one and then we have our copper seal like i said the copper seal goes on the end of the injector the black one is about midway uh, and then the white one is a little bit further down towards the nozzle and then this one is actually for the wiring harness so let's go ahead and get these on So we'll start with our copper seal here. Now, there is, if you look closely, hopefully you guys can pick up on this. You see the little chamfer on it? Oh, come on. Anyways, you can see that, and then you flip it over. And the chamfer is actually towards the center of the, of the spot there. I always put this side facing the nozzle so we'll get this on here just kind of get it started with your hand and then I'll take my 10 mil socket and I'll set that flat down then you can actually flip the injector over and then just push down nice and even pressure and then your end result is that So now we'll go ahead and we'll go with to our white o-ring so this white o-ring goes in the first spot here just like that you can see our white o-ring there and then we'll grab our black one that's the next one so i like to do the white one first because that means this black one will slide right over and go into its spot just like that so this copper washer seals compre compression or combustion gases from getting up into the injector. If you pull an injector out and this is all black and sooty looking, uh, that means this copper seal did not seal, um, which usually a failure to torque down this injector is what causes that. Your fuel is gets sealed right here. So your fuel rail goes in and injects fuel into the injector right in these little screens. So um, that's how this seals the fuel from getting to the oil, which is coming down through here. Um, which is actually firing the injector. So there's how you reseal these. Pretty simple. Oh, forgot our little, this one. Can't forget this guy. This is for our 
wiring harness up here. These ones are kind of more of a little bit of a pain to get over the clips more than anything. But once you do, they slide right on down. There you go, just like that. So we'll go ahead, we'll get the other seven resealed and then uh, we'll get these set in place. All right, so we got all of our injectors resealed. Those are all good to go. It's a very tedious, tedious job. It's not for everybody, that's for sure. And I can't imagine, you know, if you uh, worked for like Warren Diesel where you did a whole bunch of them, you know, if you did this all day, I'd probably lose my mind. So I gotta give a little bit of credit to those guys. But <clears throat> next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna make sure that our injector bores right down in there. We're gonna make sure that those are nice and clean, no debris down in there. And then we are going to oil up each one of these O-rings, these two here and this one up there. Um, and then we'll get our hold downs right here, our injector hold downs squared away. We'll get these injectors in, we'll get them torqued down. So first things first though, we'll get those cleaned up, get these oiled, start setting them in. All right, so now that we got all of our injectors in, uh, the next thing that's very, very important, obviously, is we need to torque these uh, to the proper torque pound. Um, the factory spec is 24 feet pound, um, but we are gonna be torquing these to 27. It's recommended that if you are above stock level power, that you need to torque these actually a little bit more. Um, Warren Diesel, if you get any set of injector from Warren Diesel, you are going to be torquing those to 31 uh, foot-pounds. So um, we're going to be doing 27. If we were to get a different set of injectors, we'd probably go to 31. But um, for now, we're just going to stick with 27 feet-pound. And uh, then we are going to oil up these ones and then uh, pop these through our rocker box holes up there and then uh, we can start getting the oil rails on. Quick guys, I just wanted to comment on, um, after you lube that O-ring and you stick those up through there, one thing to be sure, make sure these each have like a little barcode on it, make sure that that is facing this way when you push it up through. And then once I get it aligned and I kind of push it up there with my hand, it can be tricky to pop them all the way through. So what I'll actually do is just take a little flathead screwdriver. And if you looked in here, there's a bolt right back behind here, so you can actually get your screwdriver above that and then pry up. And then for the other ones, there's just a hole. You can get, put your screwdriver right into there, pry up on that, and they'll pop right in. Um, makes it a heck of a lot easier um, thing to do, especially if you're doing this with the engine in. But next thing we're going to do is we're going to get oil in each one of those ports where the oil rail is going to sit on. And then uh, we'll be able to slide our oil rail in. Um, the reason you put oil in these, one, it's going to help the injectors fire and make sure that they're not going to fire dry on the initial startup. But the other thing, too, is there's a little O-ring in here that you want to make sure is lubed up. When you set that oil rail on, you press it in, that that nipple on the oil rail doesn't cut that. So very important that we do that as well. So um, we'll get these filled up with oil. And go grab our oil rail. Jumping ahead a little bit, everybody. We got our oil rails in place. We got all of our uh, T30 <clears throat> uh, Torx bolts in to hold that down. Um, basically, once you get this set in, you push her on there, make sure she's sitting flush, and then just go from the outside, or I mean from the inside out, 
as you tighten these. The torque spec on these bolts is like 10 foot pounds, eight or 10 foot pounds. I think on the early style, it's different than this style, but um, it's like eight to 10 foot pounds, which is gonna be about snug. So, I mean, you know, what I always do is I start, like I said, start from the inside, work my way out, <clears throat> get them hand tight, and then just kind of give them a little bit more of a snug. You'll know um, when they're when they're nice and tight, but let's move on to, we gotta get our standpipes and dummy plugs in. Um, these are our two dummy plugs. Um, the way you can tell whether you have the updated ones or not is if this, this one right here is the old one. This is a 10 millimeter um, Allen head, and this is going to be a 12 millimeter Allen head, and this is the updated one. This is the old one. So if you have 10 millimeter, then you have the non-updated junk ones that are eventually going to leak and leave you stranded. But if you have the 12 mil, that means you are updated. So basically what Ford did was they were having a problem with this, these seals, these two, the upper one and the lower one, um, actually blowing out. I can't, you can almost see that one there. It's starting to get a little crappy, but, um, so what they did was from actually, that's actually from the oil pressure, uh, was just too much for these seals. So what they did was they put these white plastic backing plates behind them and that just adds a little bit of strength to that seal so that they can actually seal up correctly. So um, we'll go ahead and get these installed. The torque spec on these is 60 foot pounds. That is for the standpipe and the dummy plug. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so we'll get these O-rings oiled up. We'll get them stuck in. There is your part number for the dummy plug. And there is your part number for the standpipe. You're gonna need two of each if you're on both sides. All right, so that is everything underneath the valve covers. We've got everything torqued down. Like I said, 60 foot pounds on these, 12 millimeter head. Um, so yeah, we are pretty much done. We are gonna get our valve covers on. Check out this Mishimoto oil fill cap we got here. Check that thing out. Pretty cool there. But we'll get these on there. Make sure that this surface is nice and clean that we don't end up with any uh, valve cover leaking or anything like that. And then uh, we'll probably wrap it up for tonight. We're going to get the race truck back in here too. So let's get these on real quick. We'll get our bolts in the right spot. And there it is, going. guys. We got both valve covers on. Um, the studs, you know, I mean, just pay attention when you're, you're taking it apart to where the studs go. It's, pre it's relatively simple, you know, if you just remember where they went. Um, you have the Fickham hold down, the oil dipstick. And then on the same thing on the passenger side, you have the transmission dipstick, the glow plug. Uh, module so just pay attention to where those go um but other than that we pretty much have the all everything underneath the valve covers is is taken care of those are all done um so now the next step is going to be get the race truck in here we are going to make a few small modifications we have a few o-rings and stuff um one of the things that we have to do is one of the oil lines might be hitting the o-dogs intake for our uh, remote oil filter and cooler setup so uh, we might have to get something to just make a little make a little clearance clearance but uh, other than that we're moving along we're gonna keep plucking away at it I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, if you did and you guys are new make sure you subscribe hit that like button leave a comment down below Give me your thoughts. I love I love talking with you guys um, in the comment section. I always read all of the comments, so make sure you guys are leaving comments down below. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.